Diseases of the gallbladder and the biliary system are very common. Approximately 10% of the adult population has gallbladder stones. When symptoms such as pain in the abdomen and jaundice arise, diagnosis is essential. We know that 10% of all patients with gallstones become symptomatic at some point in their lives. This corresponds to 1% of the entire adult population. Ultrasound is a quick and most efficient diagnostic tool for detection of gallstones and the differentiation of possible other reasons for abdominal pain and jaundice. Along with the patient's medical history and blood test results, ultrasound is sufficient in ensuring an accurate diagnosis and treatment. Expensive and time-consuming imaging methods such as CT and MRI can often be omitted. Clearly, ultrasound is the number one gatekeeper modality for diagnosis. In the following lecture, Professor Dirk Becker from the Agatha Ride Community Hospital, an academic teaching hospital of the Ludwig Maximilians University of Munich, will explain how ultrasound can be applied in a primary care setting. Here you will learn to image the gallbladder and the biliary system. Today, in our lecture, we would like to cover some possible reasons for the abdominal pain. It can come from the stomach, as you see here. It can come from the biliary system, from the kidneys, from the liver, from the pancreas. And there also might be a reason that the abdominal pain is caused by a progressive disease coming from the big vessels inside the stomach, the aorta. But today, our lecture will cover the biliary system. The biliary system consists of the gallbladder and the large bile ducts. The bile fluid is produced in the liver and sent via the bile duct into the duodenum, where it is essential for our nutrition process. Abdominal pain can come, as I told you, from gallbladder biliary system and other systems. But how can you know that the gallbladder system is affected? Of course, as every physician does, you have to take the patient's history. Then you have to check the laboratory findings. You have to do a clinical examination to see if there is any jaundice, fever, pain, especially pain on palpation in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. In this image, you can see how often the biliary system is affected as a reason for abdominal pain. In my opinion, diseases of the biliary system are very common. We know that about 10% of the whole population in Europe has gallstones. But only 10% of these people with gallstones undergo what we call symptomatic biliary disease. They have pain from the biliary system. I want to show you the role of primary care ultrasound when a patient comes to your hospital or to your primary care unit and you have the suspicion that a biliary disease is the underlying reason for the pain. Ultrasound, from my experience, is the number one imaging method for biliary diseases. For the detection of gallbladder stones, ultrasound has a very, very high sensitivity. It detects approximately, from my point of view, from my experience, 99% of all gallstones. This is not the disease when a gallstone is in the bile duct system, but in the gallbladder. The dilatation of the bile duct is very common when there is a stone in the biliary system. But as part of the biliary tree runs behind the duodenum, it cannot always be covered with ultrasound from the transabdominal scan probe, but it can be detected by seeing or by detecting a dilatation of the common bile duct, which I can show you a little bit later on. On this anatomic model, I can easily show you the position of the gallbladder and the bile ducts lying behind the right liver lobe. Here you see the gallbladder and the bile ducts. And these organs, or the part of these organs, are lying very close to other organs in the right abdominal area, like the right kidney, which is approximately here, 
the duodenum and the pancreas, which is located right behind the stomach. I showed you how ultrasound can help you in detecting the reason for abdominal pain in the patient. Now I want to show you how you can image the gallbladder and the bile duct system. The gallbladder is easily visible when it is filled. Then it is kind of a black hole in the abdominal area. In primary care, the gallbladder is not always filled because sometimes the patient comes during night or after a meal. The gallbladder is visible from the front and from the side, from an intercostal view, and I will show you how you can easily gain those images. When you look from the front onto a patient, we have three probe positions where you can easily depict the gallbladder. One is the intercostal view, one is the longitudinal view, and one is the transverse view. I would like to start with the longitudinal view, which is always possible when the patient is in a condition that she or he can make a deep breath. Then the gallbladder moves downwards and is lying here as kind of a black hole just behind the liver. Turning the probe counterclockwise 90 degrees gives you an image about the gallbladder like that. But as I told you, most of the patients are not in a position that they inhale maximum. So this intercostal view gives you a nice view onto the gallbladder, the portal vein and the adjacent bile duct lying close to the portal vein. The bile ducts are mostly normally very thin, having a diameter from two to four millimeters lying partially behind the duodenum. And you can only see them in transabdominal ultrasound here in the intrahepatic part lying close to the gallbladder, lying close to the portal vein, and sometimes here in the extrahepatic part in the pancreatic head. There is one structure giving you an idea where you have to look for the bile ducts. This is the portal vein. You can visualize the portal vein from the front and, as I told you, very important, from the side intercostal view. The probe positions I would like to show you to depict and to visualize the bile ducts are a little bit comparable to those I showed you before to visualize the gallbladder. The intercostal view and there is an oblique view here below the ribs. This is the standard oblique view below the ribs where you can visualize the very thin common bile duct lying adjacent to the portal vein. This is the probe's position. But as I told you, as it is the case in gallbladder diseases, the patient has pain. Inhaling is not always easy. And then you can go to the side, put the probe here in an intercostal view, visualize the gallbladder, the portal vein, and the adjacent common bile duct. Now I want to show you how you can visualize the gallbladder and the bile duct with ultrasound. The best way to scan the gallbladder and the bile duct is to scan the patient in the morning because after a fastening period during night, the gallbladder is totally full and there is no bowel gas which interferes with the ultrasound. You don't need any special position for the patient. If the patient is lying in a supine position, as you can see it here, the gallbladder and the bile ducts are scannable very easily. In this case, we are using a handheld ultrasound device, as you can see it here. The probe has two sides, the linear side and the sector. For the abdominal scan, we use the sector scan. For the orientation, the probe has a light or a notch. And for the longitudinal view, you position the probe onto the abdomen of the patient when the light or the notch is showing to the head of the patient. Now let me show you how to visualize the gallbladder in the longitudinal and transverse orientation. At first, we put some gel onto the ultrasound probe and position the probe in the longitudinal orientation just below the ribs here. You see 
that there is kind of a folding visible in the gallbladder. That is a very common finding, not a septation. In the longitudinal orientation, it is very important that you tilt the probe laterally and medially to visualize the entire gallbladder. You see the gallbladder wall is very thin. It is only one thin echo ridge layer and there is no structure visible inside the gallbladder. Turning the probe 90 degrees counterclockwise into the transverse orientation gives you the transverse view of the gallbladder. Again, it's very important also in this orientation to tilt the probe cranially and caudally to visualize again the entire gallbladder. A great view to visualize the entire gallbladder is the intercostal oblique view from that position. Here you can easily visualize the whole gallbladder from that intercostal oblique position. Again, tilt the probe cranially and caudally to visualize the whole gallbladder. When tilting caudally, the right kidney comes into the image field. Here, the whole gallbladder is easily visible with the thin echo ridge wall without echogenic structures inside the lumen of the gallbladder. After imaging the gallbladder, we move on to the common bile duct. To image the common bile duct, there are two major imaging positions. One is the subcostal oblique view in the upper right quadrant, as you can see it here. And the other one is nearly the same imaging position as it was for the gallbladder before, the intercostal oblique view. In the subcostal view, you see the common bile duct parallel to the portal vein. Maximum diameter of the common bile duct is 7 millimeters, and you can see that this common bile duct has a normal diameter of 5 millimeters. Changing the image orientation changing the imaging position to the intercostal oblique view, you can again easily visualize the portal vein with the common bile duct running parallel to the portal vein. In summary, imaging the gallbladder and the biliary system is very important. There are several imaging positions to visualize the gallbladder and the biliary system. But remember, the easiest way to visualize the gallbladder and the common bile duct is the intercostal oblique view. After telling you a lot of things about the theory, how to image and to visualize the gallbladder and bile duct system, I've got some cases for you to demonstrate the power, let's say it like that, of primary care ultrasound in different clinical settings. Gallbladder stones are a common disease and if there are stones in the gallbladder, they can lead to severe problems. I would like to report this case of the 58-year-old lady. She had an acute onset of abdominal pain. The lady went to her primary care doctor and he detected this here in the gallbladder. Beside the normal gallbladder fluid, there were these masses making a shadowing here in the lower part of the image. And when you see it here in the movie, these are gallbladder stones. So the clinical situation was clear. The lady underwent a severe colic due to gallbladder stones. What are we going to do as a doctor in that situation? We have to refer the lady to a hospital for a surgical intervention and the gallbladder has to be removed. The next case can happen with or without stones. 
as you saw in the images before, the gallbladder wall was still thin. There was no sign of inflammation in the gallbladder. But when stones are inside the gallbladder, the next clinical situation can occur, which is a severe inflammation of the gallbladder. And this is visualized by a thickening of the normally very thin wall of the gallbladder. And here you see that thickening of the wall. And if this is a very acute onset, the thickening has the typical threefold layer. It has an echo rich, echo poor, and echo rich layer, which is a sign of a severe inflammation. Mostly, this situation occurs with stones in the gallbladder, but it can also, very rare, but it can occur without stones. When this situation is not detected, because the patient didn't see a doctor, a primary care physician with a primary care ultrasound device, the situation can even worsen and the whole gallbladder can fill with pus. This is visible here in that image. You do not see any normal black non-echogenic fluid in the gallbladder. You see the gallbladder is filled totally with fluid, which is not more black which is echogenic. And that is a severe sign of pus in the gallbladder, especially when you see, like you have it here on the right side, with color Doppler, you see a severe thickening of the wall as a sign of inflammation. And here, the color Doppler shows you the inflammation of the gallbladder by an increased blood flow here. And the last case I would like to show you is the dilatation of the common bile duct. As I told you, the normal common bile duct adjacent to the portal vein is very thin and sometimes cannot really be visualized. The normal maximum diameter of a non-dilated bile duct is a maximum of seven millimeters. Here it is very, very thin. You see the inferior vena cava, the portal vein, and here the very thin common bile duct. In the next image or in the next movie, you see the dilatation of the common bile duct close to the portal vein. The reason for that is sometimes a stone and sometimes a mass in the pancreatic head, which blocks the normal fluid of the bile fluid. And as you can see from these images, primary care ultrasound is an excellent method for all these patients coming with abdominal pain into a primary care unit. You can easily depict a normal gallbladder. You can mostly exclude stones. You can exclude a dilatation of the common bile duct. And that is a very helpful tool in the primary care setting. Primary care ultrasound is a must have, must do, must learn.